There's 16 questions. Some of them are simple. If you know how to apply the theorems, then there's really no calculations. Sometimes it's just going to be the same measure. Sometimes you might just divide it by two. So some of the calculations are pretty basic. Um, 15 of the questions, they're going to be six points each. And then there'll be one question where there's two blank lines. And then I'm going to count that as 10 points. So each blank line would be five points. So all the other questions, the 15, they're single answers. So it's just an, an arc measure, an angle measure, identifying um, a segment or a line in a circle, things like that. Okay. Um, no, it's just actually two numbers. Oh. Actually, there is another question where it's a yes or no, and you're going to explain, but I'm only going to count that for six points. So if you, if you get the yes or no part right, you get three points. If you get the explanation wrong, you lose three points. Okay, so actually there are two questions with two lines, but the one where it's going to be finding two values of variables, it might be like find X, find Y, um, and then that's worth 10 points. And then to explain it, do you just the theorem? You can either describe it, what's happening, uh -huh. or you can list the name. Pretty good there? All right, so let's go through the review that was due this morning, and I'll take it section by section, and... Um, tell you what to focus on, and if you need to see it worked out, I can work it out. So from 10.1, what we need, it, you're gonna need to be able to identify segments or lines in a circle. So be able to answer and tell me if something is a radius, a chord, a diameter, a secant, a tangent, or a point of tangency. Any questions on one through five? All right, now, for questions six, seven, eight, and nine, be able to use the fact that when you have a tangent to a circle, it's going to be perpendicular to a radius. So if that's the case, if you get a question like this, and I ask you um, either to show that something is tangent, just like you did on the quiz, you're gonna show me that it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. And if it does, then you know it's perpendicular. Now, you might also get a question, let's say I modify number six, let's say instead I didn't give you this number and I ask you to find the length of AB. So as long as you're given that AB is a tangent, then what you're gonna do is realize that at the point of tangency, you've got a right angle. And then you're gonna do Pythagorean theorem to find the length of AB. So what you would have done here is we could say that this is x. So x squared plus 16 squared equals 34 squared, and then you would solve it. All of the questions on the test are perfect squares. You're not gonna have to leave anything in simplest radical form. You're doing this without a calculator. Um, you're not gonna have any crazy decimals where you have to use Pythagorean theorem. They're all gonna be integers. So for example, here, you would do 16 times 16, which gives you six. And again, the numbers aren't gonna be this large, um, but again, you, could, you should be able to multiply 34 times 34, get 1156, subtract 256 from both sides, and you get 900, and then when you square root 900, you get 30. Now remember, when we did this with factoring, we would get plus and minus 30, but again, we don't want a negative side, so that's why we would only keep the positive. So be able to apply the fact that when you have a tangent to a circle, it is gonna be perpendicular to the radius, and then you would do Pythagorean theorem to find a missing piece. You did questions like numbers eight and nine on the quiz. Um, again, know that you're still doing Pythagorean theorem. You would do R squared plus 35 squared equals R plus 25 squared. Foil it and then solve. 
So again, be able to find a missing side when you have a tangent. Now, you will have a factoring question like number 11. Um, know that when you have two tangent segments that meet at the same common external point, these tangent segments are congruent. And this happens on both 9 and uh, 10 and 11. Now, the factoring question will not be as challenging as this, um, but you will have to factor and get two answers. And again, this factoring question is only going to be worth um, six points. So for number 11, you want number 11 or 10? 11, okay. So again, since these are two congruent tangent segments, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So 4x squared minus 18x minus 10 equals x squared plus x plus 4. I need to set this equal to 0 because I need to solve for x. Now, notice this time the x squareds are not going to cancel. So when the x squareds do not cancel and you also have an x term, you're going to have a trinomial that you need to factor. So next thing I'm going to do is move the x over. 3x squared minus 19x minus 10 equals 4. Subtract 4. 3x squared minus 19x minus 14 equals 0. I now need to factor this trinomial. So what we're going to do is multiply the beginning and the end. So I'm going to do negative 14 times 3, and I get negative 42. So I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative 42x squared, but who will add to give me negative 19x. Yes. So I'm going to start my list. So 1 times 1x times 42x, and it's got to be different signs and the bigger number is negative. When I add these two, so when I multiply it, I get the negative 42x squared, but when I add them, I get negative 41. So that one doesn't work. Now if I try 2x times negative 21x, this is the one that's gonna work, because when I add them, I get negative 19x. So now I'm gonna factor by grouping. So I'm gonna rewrite the first term. I'm gonna replace the negative 19 with these two factors. It doesn't matter the order that I put them in. You get the same answer either way. Then you're going to make your groups. GCF of purple is going to be 3x. x minus 7. GCF of blue will be 2. And now I'm going to set the two GCFs together. And then the thing that repeated, this x minus 7, write it once. And now you take your factors and set them equal to 0. And then the x minus 7, subtract 2, divide by 3 x equals negative two-thirds, add seven, x equals positive seven. So this will have two answers, but again, it's only going to be worth six points, three for each solution. The factoring part will not be this challenging. Hint, hint, it'll probably have a one in front of x squared. So it'll be a, an easier trinomial to factor. Pretty good? Yes. All right. No real life or real world application word problems. So they're all basically just the circles, like um, questions 1 through 11. Um, you won't have anything like number 13. Are there going to be any problems? Not for this one. The next page be able to find a missing arc measure. You will not have to classify as a, a major, minor, or semicircle on the test like you did on the quiz, but you will find missing arc measures. Anybody need to see one through four worked out? 
Three? Okay. Now, on the test, I'm not going to give you a single picture and ask you four different questions from it, except for the one where you're going to name the parts. Um, you'll have the same picture, but then you're going to have to name radius, chord, secant, tangent. So there'll be more than one question like that. But as far as finding arc measures or angle measures, it'll be a single question for each picture. So for example, on this one, sometimes you have to find missing pieces that don't automatically answer your question before you can get there. Now, in order to do this, I, to find TPS, TPS, she wanted number three, TPS goes all the way around this way. So I needed to find this missing piece in order to find that. So what I can do here, or I could have found this piece and then subtract it from 360, which might have been faster. Because if you realize that this is a diameter, then this missing piece right here, all I need to do is add 64 and 42, get 106, and then I'm gonna subtract that from 180 and I get 74. So then now what I can do to find TPS, I could just do 360 minus 74. And then I can get six to 286. Yes. Another way you could have done it, like she said, is you could have realized that this is a semicircle arc. So this would have been 180, and then you could have added the 180 plus the 42 plus the 64. Absolutely. So multiple different ways of finding these missing pieces. And then this one is, is a semicircle. So I added 64 and 42, and I got 106. And then I minus that from 180, and that's how I found the 74. So again, be able to find missing arc measures using diameters or using the missing pieces in relation to the whole circle. Um, on some of the questions, you're given an angle. Remember, if it's a central angle, then the arc measure is the same. So for example, this 64 here in this angle, let me highlight it. The 64 is also the arc measure right here because it's a central angle. Remember when it's inscribed, it's gonna either be half or double depending on if they give you the angle or the arc. Now I know on the quiz I told you, you did not have to determine if two arcs were congruent. You will have to do this tomorrow. Remember, in order for two arcs to be congruent, they need to have the same measure, and they either need to be from the same circle or from congruent circles. So for example, on number five, notice BD here has a measure of 105 because that's the central angle, and so does AC. So they have the same measure and they're from the same circle. So yes, these would be congruent. However, number six, these are not congruent because those are not congruent circles. On number six, if you pull these apart, so this little one here, notice arc LM, no, MN, this one, this has a measure of 45 degrees. And then so does PQ because they both have central angle 45. But notice that the radius length of this one is shorter than the radius of this big pink one. So because these are not congruent circles, these two arc measures, even though they're both 45, are not congruent arcs. They're similar arcs, but they're not congruent. Because whenever you have concentric circles, a circle in a circle, the inner circle is gonna have a shorter radius. Does that make sense? Like this one you could say maybe is four, and then the pink one 
or the red one, maybe you'll say it's got a length of five. Maybe it's like an inch bigger or something. Does that make sense? So they either have to be two arcs in the same exact circle or of congruent circles. Again, no word problem, so nothing like this bicycle wheel. Again, be able to find a missing arc measure. Number seven is, let's figure it out. Let's see where AB is. Let's do it. So AB is here, and it's got a measurement of 42. And then CD is over here. Now notice this is a diameter. No, it's not a diameter. Let's go ahead. Yeah, it is a diameter because see how this side is 180? So then this side would be 180. So let me add 96 and 42. I get 138. And then I'm gonna do 180 minus 138 and I get 42 degrees. So because they are in the same circle and because both arcs have the same measure, yes, they are congruent arcs. Even if I give you two circles, and let's say I separate them, and let's say I give you something that looks like this, and let's say I tell you this has a radius length of three, and let's say this has a radius length of five. And even if I tell you this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees, let's say, say this is AB and CD. And if I ask you, is AB congruent to arc CD? You might look at it and say, oh, they're both 30. But as soon as you see that they are not congruent circles, you would say that these are not congruent because they're not from congruent circles. They can have the same measure, but they need to be either in the same circle or from congruent circles. And then again, be able to do questions like number nine. Again, you don't need to do number 10. Um, be able to find an arc measure given some angle measures. Pretty good. Okay, so notice these two arcs are congruent. And this arc is 90 degrees because it's a central angle. So what I could do here is I could say these are X and X. And I know that there's 360 degrees in the whole circle. So what I'm going to do is X plus X plus 90 equals 360. So 2X plus 90 equals 360. Subtract 90. 2X equals 270 and then divide by two, and x is gonna be 135, which is also AC. So you could set it up algebraically to do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to. You could have just done 360 minus 90 and then divide by two. Either way. Mm -hmm. And then, so let's go back and do B. So for B, again, this is a diameter. So I know this is a semicircle arc. So I could go ahead and do, say again, these are X and X. So I could do X plus X plus 90 equals 180 on this one. 2X plus 90 equals 180. Subtract 90. 2X equals 90 divide by 2, x equals 45. So again, they wanted DAB, so now this is 45, this is 45, so what we can do here is DAB, and actually we didn't even need to do all of this. What we could have done is realize that it was everything, no, it's not everything, I take that back. So what I would do here is I would have added the semicircle plus the 45. So 180 plus 45, and you get 225. 10-3, again, be able to use that B, okay. You need to see that one worked out, or are you good? How did you, how did you know they were equal? Because of the, they're 
cords were congruent, they both had a little five next to it. So if the cords are congruent, then the arcs that are formed by those cords are also congruent. Can you see it worked out? Number four? Okay. You want me to work it out? Yeah. Okay. The whole thing? All right. And the value of X, I'm going to solve 15X. I'm sorry. I know. I, I'm going to just do the whole thing to get there because um, I'm going to need to find the missing pieces. And then I'm going to add them and subtract from 360. So 15X, let me not do it in highlight. So I'm going to solve 15X minus 40 equals 10x plus 10 minus 10x 5x minus 40 equals 10 add 40 5x equals 50 divide by 5 x equals 10 so now i need to plug that back in and really honestly it doesn't matter which one if i plug it in here 10 times 10 plus 10 100 plus 10, this, this arc right here is 110. Now, I could double check it and plug it into the 15x as well. And it's minus 40. So 150 minus 40 and 110. So now I have three pieces here. I've got this arc, this arc, and this arc. So what I'm going to do is add 110, 110, 40, get that total, and then subtract it from 360 to get BD. So I'm going to add, I get 260, and now I subtract it, and I get 100. So the answer to number four is 100. And again, to answer number three, I had to plug it back in. All right, and then also be able to find, before I jump to number nine, be able to answer questions like five, six, and seven, where if you see that a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then this is a perpendicular bisector. So then these two segments here are congruent. So you would just set X minus one equal to six and find out X equals seven. What was it for number six? For number six. Because these chords, so if this is 90, oops, this is 90, 90, these are all going to be congruent. So if you have, these are going to be congruent chords here. These are all radii. So then what I can do is just set them equal to each other. So it doesn't matter where you draw a radius in your picture, you're going to see that they're always going to be congruent. Okay, and then over here, this is the same thing that I just applied up above. Since these are two congruent chords, then their intercepted arcs are going to be congruent. So you would said 50x plus 2 equal to 152. Then for number 9, what we need to do here, and you're going to get a question like this on the test. However, it will be a perfect square. Now, number nine is going to be a crazy decimal. Again, you're not going to have a crazy decimal on the test, um, but I'll show, go ahead and show you how to do it. So they want us to find the length of the radius. So I can either draw my radius here from C to F. I could also go from C to E or C to G or C to H. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just leave the CF. So what I need to do is I need to realize that this chord has been bisected. So I'm gonna know that this little piece here is gonna be half of 15 and it's 7.5. I need to find this leg of the triangle and then I can find my radius, which is gonna be my hypotenuse. It's gonna be my C. Now, because these two chords are congruent, by my congruent corresponding chords theorem, I know that these segments or these chords are equidistant from the center. So this is congruent to this. So I'm going to set 4x plus 1 equal to x plus 8. Subtract x. 
3x plus 1 equals 8. Subtract 1. 3x equals 7. So divide by 3. And x equals 7 thirds. So now I need to plug that in because I need to find the purple length. So 4x plus 1. Plug in 7 thirds. And I get 28 over 3. I can change the whole number 1, so I have a common denominator, and I get 31 over 3. This ends up being 10 and 1 third. So now that's the purple length here. And now what I would do is Pythagorean theorem. Again, they're going to be integers tomorrow. So I, what I would be doing here is 10 and 1 third squared plus the blue, which was 7 and a half. And it's going to equal the hypotenuse. So actually, it would probably be better if I leave it as 31 over 3 when I square it. Again, there'll be integers tomorrow. So 31 times 31, 961 over 9. And then 7.5 squared gives me 56.25. And I'll just go ahead and divide this. It'll be a repeating decimal. It's going to be 106.7. I'm going to round it to it's 7 repeating. I'll just make it 8. Again, no decimals where you're doing Pythagorean theorem tomorrow. So 106.8 plus 56.25, 163.05. You would need to square root this. And then you'll get 12.76 rounded to the tenths place, 12.8. But again, tomorrow, all the Pythagorean theorem questions will be integers. They'll be perfect squares. So when you solve this, you just have to think of it like making it into a triangle? Correct. And you will have a question like that. All right, number 10, you would do exactly the same thing. Um, turn it into a triangle. So again, because these two segments are congruent, then when you go to draw in your radius, you could draw it right here. So you would set these two equal to each other, find x, plug it in, divide it by 2, and then again do Pythagorean theorem. And then 10, 4. Again, be able to find a missing angle or a missing arc measure. Again, treat it like a puzzle. I will not give you one picture and ask you to find multiple different angles or arcs from the same picture. Um, but again, be able to fill it in. So like for example, on one through eight, let's go ahead and fill in the picture. So they gave us arc LM. LM is right here. And they told us it was 84. I can see that the angle that formed that arc is right here. It's the MKL or LKM, and it's gonna be half of its arc. So this angle right here is 42. So that's actually this answer right here. Now the other piece that they gave me was KN, and they said KN is right here. And they said that this was 116. The angle that's forming that arc is right here. And again, you would divide it by 2. So 116 divided by 2. And it's 58. So that's going to be the KL... KLN is number five. Yep. And then now what we can do is go back and let's look for some other missing things. Now notice I've got a triangle that is inscribed in a semicircle. So that tells me that this angle right here, the JKL, let's see, is that the order they did? JKL, this is 90 degrees. So 
And then if I want to find the little missing piece right next to it, this angle. I thought JKL was 180. The, the arc is, but the angle is half of that. So this arc here, the LK, let's see, LKJ, this arc up here is 180. Then if I wanted to find this little green angle here, the JK, let's see, MK, MKJ, let's see, or JKM, this one, number four, I'm going to do 90 minus 42. So 90 minus 42. Actually. I get 48, not 58. So when I subtract, I get 48. And that's going to be this measure here. And then let's see what else we can do here. We want to find KMN. Let's look for that one. KMN, and that's an angle. So this one right here. And notice its intercepted arc is the 116. So then I can just divide that by two, which I already did up here. So KMN is 58. And then arc MJ, which is gonna be over here, Let's do a different color. MJ is here. So I don't know these pieces, so what I can do is see its intercepted arc. So its intercepted arc is formed by this green angle, which was 48. So then I can double 48. So this would be 48 times two, and that's 96. And then lastly, LNM, and that's an angle. Let's look for another color. L, M, N, L, N, here, and then here. And again, you can see its intercepted arc is here. So divide 84 by two, and it's 42. So again, you won't have to answer multiple questions, but again, be able to find a missing um, angle or an arc measure. Number 11, yes. So here what we need to do is realize that when you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, opposite angles are supplementary. So what we're going to do here is, let me just show you first on number nine, and then I'll go through and do the other ones. Since these opposite angles are supplementary, what I'm going to do is set up my algebraic equation, 5x plus 110 equals 180, and then I'll subtract 110. 5x equals 70, divide by 5, 70 divided by 5, again, we're not using calculators, so we get x equals 14. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other pair of opposite angles. I'm going to set 2y plus 104 equal to 180. So this is how you can set all these up. Now, number 11 is a little different. What we're going to do here is we need to find this missing arc measure just like you did in the homework. So what I can do here is add these three, subtract from 360, and then I'll find that missing arc measure, and then that arc for 7y will be this plus this. And I did not video anything I just said. <laughs> Erase all that. Six minutes. I'm going to say that all over again. So just ignore me. I did not plus press record. Okay, so to do the calculation to find X in number 10, I know that X and 108 are supplements, so I'm just gonna do X plus 108 equals 180, 
subtract the 108, and x equals 72. To find y, these two y's are congruent, so I'm just going to set y plus y equals 180, add the y's, divide by 2, and y equals 90. Now for number 11, since we do not have the opposite angles here, what I'm going to use is their arc measure. But before I can use their arc measure, because if you notice, if I trace over the chords that form 7y, I'm missing this piece of the arc. So I need to find AB first. So I'm going to go ahead and add 84, 80, and 152, and I get 316. I'm going to subtract that from 360, and I get 44 degrees. Now, the intercepted arc for angle 7y here is going to be the AB plus this 152. So 44 plus 152, 196, divide 196 by 2, and I get 98. This is what the angle measure 7y equals. So 7y equals 98, divide by 7, and y equals 14. For 4x, I'm going to do the same thing. 4x is made up of these two chords, and its intercepted arc is the 44 plus 84. So let me add that. I get 128. The angle measure is half of that, so divide by 2. And 4x is equal to 64. So now I'll solve for x by setting 4x equal to 64. Divide by 4, and x equals 16. So that is it for the last page of your review. And again, you have the second review with the answers that are posted on Canvas.